Uh, today we will be looking at uh, the original sin. So the word original, it means the beginning or the first. So I wanted to talk about this because Christianity is a religion of salvation. And salvation means to be saved from sin. So as a Christian, it is very important for us to know what is sin and what is salvation and how we can be saved from sin. So uh, the Greek word that Apostle John uses for sin is the word amartia, which means to miss or to, you know, to miss the goal or the target. And even with sin, this is something very similar. Even with sin, you know, there is a root and we need to know the root, you know, where it originated from. I'll give you an example. In garden, we have uh, weeds, right? So there are times when the weeds are grown, we try to cut it. But no matter how many times we cut it, it grows back again. So the problem is that we are not going into the root. So if we, you know, uproot the weed from the ground, that means the root does not, you know, is not, uh, is in the ground. So what happens is that it will not be able to grow. Similarly, with sin in our life as Christian, we need to understand, you know, where it came from. So we will be looking at uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse chapter 4. It says, everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. So sin is lawlessness. In other words, sin is ignoring God's standard. And we can think of sin as the opposite of righteousness. So what is righteousness? Righteousness is living within God's moral standard. And sin is the opposite, right? You do not abide by the word of God and the standard that God has given us. So what exactly is original sin? So original sin is deprivation. So the word deprivation means removal of something that is necessary. So when we look at God, we know that God is holy. And sin is something that is the opposite to holiness. So sin is something that is going to separate us from God. So here we need to understand that sin separates us from the love of God. So what is sin? Sin is not believing in the love of God. Sin is what you do when you think and you feel that what is right in your own, you know, understanding. So you use your, your own knowledge, experience, wisdom, and earthly understanding to, you know, do what you want to do. So that is something against the word of God, right? So therefore, sin is disobedience. It is disobedience because the word of God says, you know, that we have to love others we have to keep God first. We have to live a righteous life. But then we are not able to do that, right? And then we live our life the way we want to. So this is why sin is disobedience. And sin separates us from the love of God. And when we look at, you know, uh, Adam and Eve. So when God created Adam and Eve, he gave them this blessing. And this blessing was that they were supposed to live forever. So man was not supposed to die. But what exactly happened, you know, in the Garden of Eden that, you know, separated them from the love of God? And so I believe that something very serious might have happened, you know, in the Garden of Eden. So because of that, you know, man was separated from the love of God. So, so Adam and Eve had this blessing. And what was the blessing? It was to be in this relationship with God and to be friends with God. And in return, what was the benefit? In return, the benefit was that they were not supposed to die. And they were supposed to live forever. Amen? So they were protected from both physical death and spiritual death. And Adam and Eve could have passed those gifts <clears throat> to their children. And those gifts could have been, you know, passed down to us. But now when we look at our lives, we have to die, right? We have to die a physical death. So what is the reason behind, you know, this physical death? So 
when Adam and Eve, they disobeyed God, those gifts were revoked. And they were taken. So the word revoked means it is no longer in effect. So when God created Adam and Eve, he gave them this blessing that they will live forever. But because of their disobedience and sin, it separated them from God. So now God had to take it back because God is holy, right? And God cannot withstand sin. So sin separated them. So this is why they could not pass this blessing to their children. The Greek word for death is tenetos. So death always involves separation. And here it can be utilized to refer as both spiritual and physical death. So if we look at the book of Genesis in chapter 2 and 3, you know, it revolves around sin and death. And in chapter uh, 2, verse 16 to 17, it says, And the Lord commanded to man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must never eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat it, you will certainly die. So in the Garden of Eden, you know, there were two trees. One tree was the tree of life, and another was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So God permitted Adam and Eve to, you know, eat any kind of fruit from the tree in the garden. However, he told them not to eat from this one particular tree, which is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then, what happened? Adam and Eve, they disobeyed God. And then they ate the forbidden fruit. So when they ate the forbidden fruit, what happened? They fell into sin. They committed sin. And that's when, you know, we see that God had to cast them out of the Garden of Eden. So in chapter uh, 3, verse 6, it says, Both Adam and Eve ate the fruit in disobedience, and they entered into the state of sin. So what does it symbolizes? So it symbolizes that they had to be driven out of the Eden of Garden. Why? Because they disobeyed God. And what was the reason? It's because of sin. So no matter, you know, God loved them, but he had to cast them out of the Eden of Garden because they committed sin, because God cannot withstand sin. So even in our life, we need to, you know, look at ourselves. If there is anything that is going to separate us from the love of God, are we doing anything? that is going to separate us, you know, from God. So, what can we learn from this? So, Satan is the first, you know, being, angelic being that fell from the grace of God. So, before creation of man, God created angel. And after that, God created heavens and earth. And later on, you know, Man came into being. So how did, you know, the angel fell from the grace of God? How did, you know, the Satan was cast down from heaven to the earth? What was the reason behind? So we will look at, you know, Revelation chapter, uh, sorry, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And we were created in the image of God. And when we look at Satan... You know, he is an angelic being. So God did not create Satan in his own image. But we are in the image of God. So, again, we will look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 8. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough. And they lost their place in heaven. So here... The dragon, it represents Satan. So when Satan rebelled against God with one third of the angels in heaven, they were defeated and they were cast down to earth. So when Satan was cast down to earth, who was ruling over the earth at that time? It was Adam and Eve, right? Because in Genesis 1.26, we see that the Lord said, you know, let them rule over the creatures like along the ground. That means... The fall of Satan happened after the creation of man. 
So there are two reasons why Satan rebelled against God. One was that he coveted the position of God. He wanted to be like God. You know, he... And another reason was that he was jealous of men. Why? Because we were created in the image of God. And second, God wanted men to rule over the earth. So that was the two reasons. So, as we know that, you know, Satan rebelled against God and then he was cast down to the earth. So, Satan knew that disobedience could lead to fall. So, he rebelled against God. He wanted to be like God. But then he was defeated and then he was cast down to the earth. So, now, when we look at Satan, we know that he was, you know, an angel, right? So, he was serving God. However, because of his disobedience and his arrogance, thinking that he could be like God, he rebelled against God, but in return, he was defeated. So what happened? He was cast down to the earth. Now, Satan knows that in order for a person to be in a fallen state, he needs to disobey God. And this is why he, when he was cast down to the earth, in the Garden of Eden, he went and he tricked Eve and Adam, right? So why he did that? So that they also could fall from their state into sin. So if they will commit sin and if they will fall from their state, then what will happen? They will be separated from God, right? So what does the Bible tell us about sin? And where did sin come from? So sin came from Satan into man. It was Satan who rebelled against God first. He was cast down to the earth and he knew that Disobedience can lead to separation from God. So he went and he tricked Adam and Eve. So when we want to know about sin in the Bible, we have to also know about Satan. Why? Because he is the source of evil. He is the, you know, the only creature that sin came from. And this sin was passed down from Satan to us. So the same very nature is in, in us also. So we will look at Satan. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to 14. It says, How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nation. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit and throne on the mount of assembly, on the outmost heights of Mount Zephon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high God. So here what we can see is that, you know, this is what Satan is, you know, saying. That the first thing is that it says you have fallen from heaven. And then it says morning star. So who is Satan? So Satan used to be a morning star. And if we look at the morning star, you know, it shines very brightly. So he was known as the angel of wisdom. So Satan, before his fallen state, he was an angel of wisdom. And he was known as the bright morning star. However, this angel of wisdom fell because of pride, arrogance, and disobedience. Here it says that, I will sit and throne on the mount of assembly, on the outmost heights of Mount Zephon. I will ascend above the tops of the cloud. I will make myself like the Most High. That means he is referring himself, you know, that he wants to be like God. He wants to sit at the place of God. That means he wants to be like God. So this was his arrogance, his pride. He thought that he could be like God. However, he was not aware that God is the creator and he is the creation. And creation cannot win over creator. God can, you know, in a zap of his finger he can you know make him perish but he did not do that right but then God gave Satan a second, uh, second chance and then he was cast down to the earth but instead of repenting instead of changing what he did he went ahead and then he tempted Adam and Eve so that they could sin and they could be separated from God so since Satan was separated from God already and he knew that Adam and Eve had this wonderful relationship with God. And God loved them and he wanted them to live forever. And he wanted them to rule over the earth. So now he was jealous of that, right? 
So he is jealous because he wanted to be like God and he could not succeed. And then he was in his fallen state. And now what he did, instead of repenting, instead of, you know, thinking of like changing, he did one step further ahead. He went one step further ahead. And then he did the, one of the worst things that, you know, Satan could do to mankind. That is to make them fall. So when he tempted them, what happened? Sin entered. And then because of sin, death came into this world. So if you look at the sequence, it is like this. Disobedience is first, second is sin, and third is the fruit. So even in our life, we have to think. We know sometimes that, you know, we have to do the right things, right? We know what is right and wrong. We know what is good and bad. But knowingly, we do the bad things. So what we are doing is that we are disobeying the word of God, right? We are disobeying the God's commandment. And knowingly, we are dis, you know, doing those things. So when we are doing, what is the next thing? We are committing sin. So first is disobedience. The second is sin. And when you commit sin, what will happen? You will bear the fruit, right? So you have to face the consequences of your action. So you are free to choose whatever you want to do. But you are not free from the consequences of your choices. So you may say that I have a free will, I can do whatever I want. But whatever we want to do is not beneficial, right? So we have to be very careful. We should not be like Satan, you know, pride, arrogance. Oh, I know everything. I have experience or I have this knowledge. No. The opposite of arrogance is humility. So we have to have this humility in our heart. We should not be like Satan who said that I will be like most high God. How can the creation, you know, be like the creator? It is impossible, right? So this is why we have to, you know, fight against this. We have to know. We have to go to the roots. We have to know what exactly sin is and what it does and how we can, you know, overcome this. Just like the, you know, the weed. If we are not removing it from the ground, from the roots, it will grow again. So no matter how many times we try not to commit sin or try to do bad things, we end up doing that, right? And then we feel very guilty. Oh, I cannot overcome. It is because we are only trying to, you know, remove the sin from above. We are not going into the roots. If we remove the roots, then we will not bear fruit, right? So when we put a seed on the ground, what is the first thing that's come out of the seed? It's the root. So the root is the most important thing. Even in our lives, we have to go down deep in our heart and we have to see where the root is. And we have to remove it so that we will not, you know, commit more sin. And there are so many kinds of sins, right? Big and small. But then we have to see, like, where the root is so that we can overcome it. And and as we can see, you know, that Satan was the angel of wisdom. That means he is very wise. And I will give you one example. God created angels and they were in heaven. They were in the presence of God. They were serving God, the almighty God. So those angels have witnessed with their very own eyes who God is. They were in the presence of God. They know how powerful God is, right? But still then, Satan was able to convince one third of the angels to rebel against God. So how can Satan manipulate those angels who were in the presence of God? So now we have to think, how wise is Satan? If those angels who have witnessed God with their very own eyes can turn against God, that means Satan is very deceptive, he is very wise, he is very clever. And we have not seen God. That means he can trick us very easily, right, into committing sin. So we have to be more wiser than Satan. And how can we be wise? Because there is two kinds of wisdom in this world. One is the wisdom of the world, which is to only think about ourselves. It is very self-centered. It is very mean. And another wisdom is the wisdom of God, which is completely opposite to the wisdom of the world. So we need to have the wisdom of God in order to overcome the wisdom of the world. So we need to have the wisdom of God so that we can live our life in a righteous way. Sin is disobedience, right? So how can we live in obedience? It is only when we know the word of God. 
The word of God is going to help us to determine what is right and wrong. It is going to help us to live a godly life. So it is very important for believers to have this wisdom of God. Otherwise, this world is a very scary place. Sin is getting darker and darker. Sin is getting smarter. Satan is coming up with different kind of ways to make us fall in temptation, to make us, you know, commit sin. So we also, as the people of God, we should be very careful. We should, you know, have the wisdom of God so that we can overcome Satan and his deceptiveness so that we will not be separated from the love of God. Why Satan wants us to be separated from the love of God? Because he is jealous of us. He knows that he is going to hell. He is going to suffer for eternity. That is why he wants us to go as well, to suffer in hell. But then God does not want us to perish. He wants us to be saved. Amen? Let us look at Jude chapter 1 verse 6. Here it says, The angels did not keep their position and abandon the home. So the angels were supposed to be servant. They were supposed to, you know, be ministering angels. They are servants. They are supposed to serve. So God created angels to serve and to assist him. So again, we will look at Hebrews 4, uh, chapter 1, verse 14. It says that are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? So this tells us the position of the angels. They are servant. They are ministering angels. They are supposed to serve us. And who are they going to serve? They are going to serve the children of God. And who are the children of God? We are. We are the children of God. So when God created Adam and Eve, they were his children, right? So angels were supposed to serve him. But they abandoned their position and they did not serve. So what it is showing us, this, this is showing us arrogance. This is showing us pride. And this is the original sin. Because they were spiritual servants, but they did not keep their position. So this is why, you know, arrogance is the sin that we should fight very cautiously. If we have pride, if we have arrogance, it can lead us to very dangerous places. So where did Satan come from? Satan also is, you know, used to be the creation of God, right? God created Satan to serve. And he was supposed to be good. He was supposed to be a good angel. And he was the angel of wisdom. So he was supposed to use his wisdom to serve the children of God. But then because of pride and arrogance, he did not serve. He left his position. So now what happened? Because of disobedience, he failed and he changed. So this is something that we need to remind ourselves. Even though we are good, we also may fall and we can fall. And when we fall, we will change from good to bad. Right? So as the children of God, we must never abandon our position as the children of God. Because if we do that, we will be separated from God. And what is the fall of man? The fall of man is that we will be separated from God because of sin. So this is why, you know, we know that sin came from Satan and sin was passed down to men from Satan. This is why we have to know the root, that how it came into us. And if we are not worried about the root and if we are only trimming the branches, the leaves, then we will never be able to overcome. We'll never be, be able to uproot it from the roots. So instead of you know, only cutting the branches and trees, we need to pluck it from the root. So this is very important. We have to be very serious. Otherwise, we will you know, be wasting our time. It will be like going in circle. You want to do good, but you will not be able to do good. You want to you know, live a righteous life, you will not be able to do that because you have not removed the root from your life, the root of sin. So we can gain a very important lesson that we should never change. Satan was not evil, you know, from the beginning. But he fell and he changed and he became evil. Even we should be very cautious. Right now we may be good, but we also can fall. And what would be the reason? Arrogance. What would be the reason? Pride. 
So we have to be very careful, we have to be very cautious about our position, about our role, so that we may not fall. Hebrews 13, 8 says that God is unchanging because he is always the same yesterday, tomorrow, and forever. And he is always true. So the problem is that we as humans, we can change. The world can change. But God will always remain the same forever and ever. So this is why we as humans, we are fallen creatures, right? This is why we change. Let us look at Genesis 2, uh, verse 7. So, when we look, you know, and the story of Adam and Eve, we know that something very serious had happened, right? Because of that, they were separated from God. They were cast out from the Garden of Eden. And God revoked that blessing. So here in Genesis 2, 7, it says that, Then the Lord formed a man from dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life and the man became a living being. So we can see that when God created Adam from the dust, he bred the bread of life. And what is this bread of life it is talking about? It is talking about the spirit of God. So when God put his spirit into you know, Adam, he became a living being. And bread of life represents the spirit of God, right? So it is the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. So when we look at the consequences of the original sin, it morally corrupted, you know, our nature and character. We are not sinners because we sin. We sin because we are sinners. So when Adam and Eve, they disobeyed God and they ate the tree from the knowledge of good and evil, they fell into sin. And then sin separated them from the love of God. So what happened? So when sin came into them, God took back, you know, that blessing that was the Spirit of God. And because of that, death came into this world. So this is why, you know, we as humans today, we die. We die physically, right? And it is only a one-time experience. So there are three kinds of deaths. One is the physical death. It is when your body will die physically. It is a one-time experience. And your soul will be separated from your physical body. And your soul will go back to God for judgment. Another is spiritual death. Even though you are alive physically, your spirit is dead because there is no relationship with God. And the third one is eternal death. It is when you will be separated from the love and the presence of God forever. And you will be sent to hell. So hell is eternal separation from God. Because you will not be able to see God anymore. You will be separated forever and ever. So this is something very serious. And Satan wants us to be separated from God forever. Not only in this world when we are alive. He wants us to be spiritually dead. So that we will not have any kind of relationship with God. And also after we die, he wants us to be separated from God forever. So this is why it is very important for us to know. What is the remedy for this? How can we be saved from the wrath of God, from hell? So the question is how to be set free from the original sin. Romans 5, 12 says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. And in this way, death came to all people because all sin. So when we look at the Bible, there are two Adams. So one Adam is the first Adam. Because of his disobedience, death came into this world and we were separated from the love of God. And the second Adam is Jesus Christ. Because of his obedience, you know, now we have eternal life. And what is eternal life? Eternal life is salvation. And if you remember, 
in the book of Genesis, when God created Adam and Eve, he gave them this blessing. And this blessing was to live forever. However, because of sin, he took that blessing away. But this is the same blessing that God is giving us again through Jesus Christ. And this blessing is the blessing of eternal life. And it is called salvation. And what is salvation? The cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ is salvation. Salvation is good news. What is the good news? The good news is that we can be saved from sin. We can be saved from the wrath of God. And here, there is, you know, two contrasts. Arrogance and disobedience. Because of Adam, first Adam, because of disobedience, sin entered, and now we are, you know, supposed to die. But because of the new Adam, Jesus Christ, because of obedience, we have new life, new creation. You know, when we now belong to the family of Christ. So here we see that arrogance will lead to disobedience. And with arrogance, you have disobedience. And disobedience is a very serious sin. Because in the Bible we see, right, that because of this disobedience, man was separated from God. And disobedience is something very serious because in the Bible it says, it is better to obey than to sacrifice. That means obedience is greater than sacrifice. And the Bible focuses on, you know, obedience. So the opposite of obedience is disobedience. And disobedience means you commit sin, right? You do not do what God wants you to do. So this is why, you know, people are arrogant. This is why they are obedient, disobedient. Because of their pride, because of their, you know, selfishness. So because of the humility and obedience of Jesus, God exalted him to the highest. Amen? So if we look at, you know, John 3.16, it says... For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever will believe will not perish, but will have eternal life. So this is the same blessing that God is giving us today. And it is totally up to us that whether we want to receive this blessing or not. And how we can receive this blessing? It's very simple. We have to accept it by faith. And only those people who are humble, who have a humility in them, they will say that I cannot contribute anything to my own salvation. I cannot do anything to save myself because I am a sinner. So I believe in the Lord. And I know that if I trust the Lord, I will be saved. So that is humility, right? Knowing that I cannot do anything. Acknowledging that we are weak. And we cannot contribute anything to our own salvation. There is humility. And knowing that God is the one who provides. And it's a free gift of grace. And we have to only receive it by faith. So this is humility. But those people who are arrogant will say, eh. You know, they would not want to accept that. Salvation is for everyone. God wants to save everyone, right? But then not all of us will be saved. And what would be the reason? It is because of our pride and arrogance. The Bible clearly states, God never intended men to go to hell. It is by our own free will and choice we are abandoning God. And from the beginning we can know that even you know, Adam and Eve, they abandoned God, they disobeyed God, and then they did what they wanted to do. So even for us, we need to understand we need to look into our lives and we have to see. Are we arrogant? Because when we look at the life of Jesus, you know, he served his whole life with humility. He was loving and he was taking care of every one of us, even to the point of the, you know, death in the cross. He said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. So this is the humility of God, right? So we should have the same kind of humility in our life. And we should seek God so that we can be saved. There is nothing that we can do to save ourselves. It is only through Christ. He is the only way, the truth, and the life. And no one goes to the Father except through Him. So we have to accept that. We have to know that He is the only way. Otherwise, if we are pride, if we have arrogance, we will never 
you know, we'll be able to meet God. Because this is what separates, this is what will separate us from God. Arrogance, pride, disobedience. So we have to be very humble. And we have to carry this cross until we, you know, completely uproot the root of sin from our life. We have to suffer. Jesus showed us the way and he showed us the secret. The secret is humility, accepting that we are weak. And God is the only one who, you know, provides and he is the source to everything. So the question that I want to ask you today is, have you received this salvation? Do you have Jesus in your life? We need to invite Jesus so that he can come into our heart, into our lives, and he can help us to remove this pride and arrogance from within us, which is the original sin. He will help us to, you know, overcome all the difficulty, the problems that we have in our heart. So if we do not have Jesus, we can never overcome with our own strength. That is why we need to have Jesus. We need to invite Jesus so that he will guide us and teach us how we can overcome. Amen? Let us all pray. Dear precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, for those who have gathered here, Father. I believe, Father, that your word has spoken to us, and we believe, Father, that you are always there to teach us and guide us. We know that we are weak, and Satan is very wise because he is the angel of wisdom. But we know, Father, that his wisdom is the fallen wisdom, and it cannot be compared to your wisdom, Father. Because you are a mighty God, you are the creator who created every one of us, Father, including Satan. So today we want to know, Father. Today we want to know you more so that we can have your blessings, the same blessing that you give to Adam and Eve when you created them, Father, the gift of eternal life. Father, as we live our life, Believing in you and trusting you, may we always keep you first, Father. Help us to have the wisdom of yours so that we will be able to live our life in a righteous way, Father. Help us so that we can overcome the deceitfulness, the trickery of Satan, so that we can never be separated from your love, Father. Satan is very cunning. He will always try to separate us from your love. But we know, Father, that your grace is always there to sustain us. And I pray, Father, that let your ministering angels be with us, guide us and teach us, and help us to be strong in faith, help us to persevere so that we can never be separated from your love, Father. I thank you once again, Father, for this time. Bless each and every one of us. We commit all our life into your mighty hands, and I pray this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.